Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck, and a very warm welcome to Thursday Fretworks. Alas, it doesn't have quite the same ring as Friday Fretworks, and I haven't lost my marbles, I know I'm 24 hours early, but in a roundabout way, the reason for which this video is early is kind of the subject of tomorrow's video that will be appearing on my YouTube channel at the same time as Friday Fretworks at 5 p.m. GMT. I'm excited to say that is the second single from Buck and Evans' upcoming album, Right About a Day, Going Home. Now, if you follow me on Instagram or you're a regular viewer of Friday Fretworks, you may well already be familiar with this little clip which I teased last week. So in case you hadn't guessed, that is the solo from Going Home. And given it is being released tomorrow at 5 p.m., I thought today's video would be a cool opportunity to break that down, answer some of the many questions I had in regard to this clip over on Instagram and on YouTube, and just give you guys a little bit of an insight into what I was thinking when I sort of composed this solo in the loosest sense, and just break it down note for note. And for those interested in tabs, they will be available to download in the description box below. But as I said, before we delve right into that, please do stick around for tomorrow at 5 p.m. We will be releasing the video for this single, and it's hands down the most epic, coolest video I've ever been involved with. So I hope you get a kick out of it. But um, let's delve right into breaking it down. So the first key bit in understanding this solo is having a grasp of what key it's in. It's in A minor pentatonic, and the, the chords that you're going to be soloing over are A minor, needless to say, G major, F major, have a D minor. We also have an E seventh in there as a turnaround chord, but I can't quite remember where it is off the top of my head. Um, so moving on to the first note of the solo. Now, knowing what you know in terms of it being an A minor, it makes sense that the first note of the solo is an E, which if you're familiar with the theory, is the fifth of the root note. So straight away, we're starting with a little bit of a chord or a very obvious harmony, which just gives it a kind of nice starting point. You know, it's, it kind of works better than starting with something too dissonant or not particularly related to the root note. So we're gonna be bending up on your seventh fret to your ninth fret on your G string. And with most of my bends, it's very much a case about hitting it strongly, really making a strong statement with that first bend, and more importantly, really hitting the note on the head and not kind of wavering around it. There's no vibrato on it as such, but maybe a little bit of vibrato coming back down for the next bit. Again, a vibrato there on the fifth fret or the G string. The next lick after that is a very Stevie Ray inspired thing. I actually finger pick it, but that's really not integral. Just for me, at, le at least gives it that slight more pop, I guess, and definition. But uh, you know, I'll try and do it both ways to show you that it equally works as well with a pick. Same difference, really. So I'm going to try and play this slow enough for you to pick things up as we go. If you want a note by note breakdown, the tabs are available in the description box below. But that, this video is really about giving you a sense of just how I build solos, how I write them, I guess, in the loosest sense, though I've never really written a solo. Um, it's just a case of constructing it and telling a little bit of a narrative. I know I go on like that, like a broken record, but it very much is about building a narrative and building a little bit of a story through tension and release, through note choice, through whether you bend up to a note or whether you slide into it. It's all that kind of stuff that really helps just make things a little bit more interesting, I guess. So. So 
So we have that rundown, which is essentially just running down your A minor pentatonic scale. With a couple of little kind of slides and glissando here and there. And then on a very definite three, five, seven, three on your A string. Moving into a bit which always makes me laugh because it sounds a little bit or reminds me of a little bit of a Jack Johnson tune. I can't remember which one it is. It's that. Uh... <laughs> it's that little slide bit that reminds me of whatever it is. So we're going to work your way up to your ninth fret on your G and then your eighth fret on your B. Sometimes I slide that note to get up to the 12th fret. Sometimes I bend it. It's really dependent on what I'm feeling like on that day, to be honest. But I think on the record, I'm not sure what I did. Uh, either way, it's more than one way of skinning a cat. So. Both work, both sound good. The next bit we're actually going to bend is a half step bend. So we're bending up to an E flat note from a D note on your 10th fret. So a little kind of subtle bend there. Again, we've got to run down your minor pentatonic scale. back up on your root note. Now this is where things get interesting and this is where I've gone out on about in the past about repetition and building a sense of familiarity through by repeating something you know and in that it makes it melodic it makes me makes it rhythmic and it makes it memorable and the next sort of let's break it down into three sections I guess of this solo are very much uh, reminiscent of each other. So your first one we're going to be going up to your ninth fret on your G and your eighth fret on your B and we've got this swung kind of um, I don't know what you'd call it really this. Very kind of blues thing, very Delta Blues. Um, just a kind of cool blues thing, I guess. And it's groups of four. And then back in your pentatonic box. The next one, again, rhythmically is identical, um, bar the end bit. It's gonna be on your fifth fret. We're going to have a very kind of dissonant little harmony, um, stolen in my case, I think, from Chuck Berry thing. So it's on your seventh fret on your B and your eighth fret on your E. Again, we're going to lean on that seventh fret there on your B string, even though it's not in the scale, just because it gives it a slightly sort of, I don't know, slightly edgy kind of feel, I guess, because it's not. Right. Again, the last section of this little sort of section <laughs> of the solo is reminiscent of that in a way, very slightly different uh, in terms of rhythmic sort of development, but sounds like this, which hopefully you'll kind of recognize. So again, it's split into sort of four sections with the last one being shorter. we've got a slight rhythm change this time to triplets. <laughs> Moving into, I guess, the fastest, you know, kind of more conventionally hard bit of the solo. Gonna try and break it down as slowly as I can. The difficulty is with stuff like this, the moment you slow it down too much, I lose all sense of rhythm and my time in and note choice goes out the window and I end up just playing anything random. So if you want to check out the exact notes of this, I went to great pains to tab it out. So the link for that is in the description box below. Uh, but it sounds a little bit like this. Straight away there, we've got the little 
little glissando, <laughs> glissando, if I can get my words out, slide it up from your 15th fret to your 16th, back down to your 15th on your B string, down to your 13th, gives it that sort of vocal thing. Working your way back up to a position one pentatonic, albeit up the octave. So instead of playing it between your fifth and your eighth fret, we're now playing it right up here. Ah, near enough. So, and then the last bit of the solo. Again, we've got a bit of repetition going on there. Probably my favorite bit of the solo. I love the way that rhythm is just kind of dragged out, really kind of makes you wait for those notes. So we're starting off with a bend on your 19th fret, a little half step bend. For 20, 19, 17. Huh. Sliding off the edge of the fretboard, back up to your 19. Big bend on your 20. Before the kind of typically vocal thing that I tend to go for. So we're gonna be bending right up on your 22nd fret. So if you've already got 21 frets, it's gonna be a little bit of a hard uh, ask at this point, but we're gonna be bending up a whole step, then another half step. So it's one and a half step bend. Before coming back down, before bending back up. For 20, bend on your 22nd, the hammer on, back to your 20, and then the last four notes. I lie, last five notes. And again, definitely worth mentioning my right hand there, we've got a slight rake of the uh, pick coming up the strings. Far from essential, but really gives it that sort of Hendrixy kind of thing, I guess, that Stevie Ray. It's a pretty bluesy track going home, and it just kind of felt right to not really overthink it so much um, and just go for some more kind of straight ahead blues stuff, I guess, um, which is very much the thinking behind this solo. Hopefully, you'll see that again, <laughs> maybe get a little bit repetitive at some points, but the solo has very much worked its way up the neck. So we've been starting off in position one, working your way up to, in this case, position one, again, but up the octave, stepping outside that on various occasions. Reason being, it helps me tell a story, helps build a little bit of tension with some, you know, kind of dynamic release and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, you know, it just makes it more interesting, makes it more interesting for the listener, makes it feel as though it's going somewhere, and on a self-indulgent level, makes it interesting for me. So, as I said, the tabs for the sort of note-specific version of this will be in the description box below. This video was more a sort of demonstration of just the thought process behind it and why I go where I do on certain occasions. As I said, the track going home will be released tomorrow um, on this YouTube channel at 5 p.m., so please do check that out. I'm really proud of it, um, as I am the track itself. It's the first track that we ever wrote with Buck and Evans, um, and I'm very excited to see what's, you know, how it gets on in the world on its own. Um, so yeah, there we go. As ever, thank you very much for watching Friday Fretworks. I shall see you next week for another episode. Cheers, guys. Take care.